tricks in my pocket. I have things up my sleeve, but I'm the opposite of the stage magician. He gives you illusion, but has the appearance of truth. I give you truth in the pleasant disguise of illusion. Take you back to a rooftop in St. Louis. Time, the quaint period, the huge middle class of America was matriculating from the school for the blind. Their eyes had failed them, or they had failed their eyes, and so they were having their fingers forcibly pressed down against the fiery braille alphabet of a dissolving economy. In Spain, there was a revolution. Here, there was only shouting and confusion, and labor disturbances, sometimes violent, and otherwise peaceful cities such as Cleveland, Chicago, and Detroit. That is the social background of this play. The play is memory. Being a memory play, it is dimly lighted. But it's sentimental. It's not realistic. In memory, everything seems to happen to music. That explains the fiddle in the wings. I'm the narrator of this play and also a character. The other characters are my mother Amanda, my sister Laura, and the gentleman caller who appears in the final scenes. He's the most realistic character in this play, being an emissary from a world that we were somehow set apart from. Oh, but having a poet's weakness for symbols. Well, I'm using this character as a symbol. That's the long delayed yet always expected something that we live for. There is a fifth character who doesn't appear other than in a photograph hanging on the wall. Now when you see the picture of this grinning gentleman, please remember that this man is our father who left us long ago. He was a telephone man who fell in love with long distance gave up his job at the telephone company and skipped a lot fantastic out of town. Last we heard from him was a picture postcard from the Pacific coast of Mexico containing a message of only two words. Hello? Goodbye. No address.